nice flight to Philip. Brianna Williams, she comes. A race against the clock for Asafa. This is Wayne Hall, bringing you some exciting news. Sports Roundup, bringing you the latest and greatest on track and field, cricket, swimming, and more, right here on Yardflow TV with yours truly, your host, Wayne Hall. Hello and welcome to Yardflow TV Sports Recap, brought to you by Yardflow TV in association with The Wayne Hall Show. I'm Wayne Hall. Over 28,000 runners took to the streets in cold weather this morning to compete in the 50th staging of the Chevron Houston Marathon. The race saw a couple of record-breaking performances. Kira D'Amato of USA broke Dina Castor's American Marathon record of 2 hours, 19 minutes and 36 seconds set in 2006 with a new time of 2 hours, 19 minutes and 12 seconds. James Ngandu of Kenya was the first place men's marathon finisher with a time of 2 hours, 11 minutes and 3 seconds. Sarah Hall of USA set a new American half marathon record with a time of 1 hour, 7 minutes, 15 seconds. Vikati Shepnengo, sorry, Vikati Shepnengo of Kenya set a new course record with a time of 1 hour, 5 minutes and 3 seconds. Mikisa Toulouse of Ethiopia was the first place men's half marathon finisher with a time of 1 hour and 24 seconds. Big up to all who ran in this race. Listen, talk about a cold race. This Chevron Houston Marathon was one of them. So big up to all of them. And look, still running record times in this cold weather. In Australia, Novak Djokovic will not be vying for a fourth consecutive Australian Open and what would be his 10th overall after the authorities denied his visa due to being unvaccinated. As one person tweeted, and I quote, he was basically told to take his unvaccinated balls and leave, end quote. I wonder if they meant his tennis balls. Dykovic said he was extremely disappointed by the ruling, but respected it. What's your take? Put something in the comment. Did they rule too seriously, too strictly, or are the Australians right in what they did? Especially considering he had already contracted COVID and could be one person with a little immunity to it and probably wouldn't be spreading it either. What's your take? Should they have been so harsh? Jamaica is expected to be confirmed for at least three spots in the bobsled competition at next month's Winter Olympic Games in China. Yes, when the qualifiers are announced after today, we will know exactly who will be representing the island. According to Mark Silva, the technical director of the Jamaica Bobsled and Skeleton Federation, Jamaica could get into the games with as many as four events. But the two-woman team might have to wait after what appeared to be a sure selection slipped from their grasp. It's expected that the two-man, four-man, and the female monobob teams will get into the games. Based on standings in the points so far, but the two-woman team could have to wait a few days. Finally, Clarendon College defeated Dintil, Dintil, Clarendon College defeated Dintil Technical 1-0 in the final of the Issa Digital Championship Cup at the Stadium East this past Saturday. A 53rd-minute strike from Kahim Dixon sealed the deal and landed the boys from Chapleton, their first ever win of the Issa Digicel Championship. This was the first time two teams from country were contesting this final. And finally, again, in soccer, the African Cup of Nations is turning out to be very exciting right now. Some of the early group leaders include Cameroon, Mali, and guess what? Senegal. And would you believe Algeria is at the bottom of their group as the defending champions? We'll have more on that for you, along with other exciting events happening in another edition of Yardflow TV Sports Recap with yours truly, Wayne Hall. Keep it locked on Yardflow TV Sports. And until next time, happy sporting. Hall. Keep it locked for more right here, Yardflow TV. Yardflow TV.